a couple months back, I was listening to a podcast by Father Richard Rohr. I enjoy listening to him speak, and it's usually on in the background when I'm doing something. And I heard a very interesting comment, and I tend to agree with him. He said, one of the problems with the church as it stands now is that the church is very good at worshiping Jesus, but does not really teach to follow Jesus. And then he went on to say, again, I agree with him, that Jesus never said, worship me. But Jesus did say, follow me. And I believe there's a number of people out there who are turned off by standard worship. It just doesn't do anything for them. I mean, in the Episcopal Church, we're really good at liturgies. We do it very well. You spend all this time putting together a wonderful service, and it's just the same people that typically show up every Sunday that are there. But it doesn't call people from outside into that space. Because there are a number of people who are not interested anymore in that space. But I think they are and would be interested in following Jesus if they knew what Jesus was all about. After my cataract surgery, uh, I had to get uh, a new prescription and I had to go to a new optometrist. And when we were chatting before and after the exam, uh, she was asking me a little bit about what I did for a living and everything else. And it came out that I was a clergy person. And uh, we engaged in this conversation. And I could tell that she was unchurched probably because uh, she was a scientist. She's an optometrist. They have a scientific way of thinking. And I had said to her that, at least in my faith, uh, we embrace science. Science is part of all of creation. I see no conflict with that. But the important thing was to have a centered spirituality. And uh, maybe because she is Asian, uh, she went, oh, so what you're talking about is enlightenment. And I went, exactly. And then before I left, uh, she said, could you recommend a book for me to help me with regaining my faith or to look, looking at faith? And so uh, uh, I guessed her age to be maybe in her early 40s, which means that she's moving towards the second half of life. Uh, I suggested Falling Upward by Richard Rohr um, because she had her first container filled with all these beliefs. And now the second half of life, she has to take some of that out of the container to decide what works and what isn't helpful. And so I thought it may be a good thing for her. Uh, I, of course, would not hear from her until I go back for another prescription, uh, but I will be curious to see if she read the book. But more importantly, that meant to me that there are people out there who are seeking, who are not really interested in the traditional church service. And so that got me thinking. So I propose that we create a virtual online community targeting seekers who wish to follow 
Jesus. And it would require us to come up with a weekly video to help engage these people, but not using traditional worship language or churchy language. I'm still thinking about ideas about liturgy and how uh, an online um, offering could be made, and that's why I'm asking for your help. But uh, there are two things I see as very much a possibility. For people to be a part of this group, I would like them to commit to trying to incorporate a centering prayer in their life. Uh, people agreeing to sit quietly for about 20 minutes a day. That's not too much to ask, I believe. And the whole idea of centering prayer, if you haven't uh, practiced it, is to just not think, to find out what all those negative emotions are that first crop into your mind. That is the tool that tells you what you need to get rid of. And finally, to allow this time to bring you to what uh, practitioners say, the eternal yes. God is more about saying yes than no. And when you feel you've got that yes, you're done. And it usually takes typically 20 minutes of silence for this to happen. The second thing I would like to use as a weekly uh, tool is Lectio Divina. You take a piece of scripture, you read it once, you let people sit with it, you read it a second time, you let people sit with it, and then you read it a third time and allow it to go a little bit deeper. That allows scripture to be applied to people's lives. Oh, and another thing we could do would be to find a spiritual writer or a poet or any, any writing that would back up that particular scripture reading. Uh, for example, uh, in Compline this week, um, I used a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. talking about loving your enemy. Well, there's an obvious scriptural uh, basis for that. So you can tie them together. And I'd like to ask you, if you are willing to help me, to think about other things videos might incorporate. I would like to know if any of you out there are interested in forming this online group. I already have the Compline channel that is set up to do liturgy. Of course, right now, the facing says Compline Online, but it could be changed uh, to reflect what we're trying to set up. Compline would still be available in that channel, but we would add another dimension. So what I suggest is, if you're interested and you'd like to uh, be a part of this discussion, leave a comment below. And for the next two or three weeks, let's engage in a YouTube conversation about the practicality of creating this online community. If that goes well, uh, I will then pick up and talk in more detail about how we might do this in February. Because I believe there truly are people out there who are interested in following the radical and open ideals of Jesus if they only knew who that person is. So I hope, I hope the Holy Spirit is active in this video, that there are a few of you out there who would like to become involved in this project. And if you are not wanting to be involved in the project, but still have some sort of constructive uh, feedback for me, please leave a message below and we'll start this discussion. 
and hopefully there will be a small core of people who would like to make this happen, and we will make it happen. Because I have a feeling that this need needs to be fulfilled, and we are the people to do it. So, let's hear from your comments, let's hear from you, and let's get this going. And I'll see you next month with more of a recap and more details of what we will do to start this online community. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Until next month.